All right, we're live. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Let me activate the chat, I guess. Boom. Done. Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. Let's wait a minute or so, then we will start. Hello, hello, hello everyone. All right, let me know in the chat where you're from. Uh, how are you? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Guess it's Let's see where you're joining us from. Hi, everyone. Barcelona, Germany, South Africa. Hi. Hello, hello. Barcelona, Ohio, Texas. Hi, everyone. All right, all right, cool. Ukraine, awesome. Philippines, great, great. As always, lovely. As always, lots of people all around the world. London, awesome. So let's get started with the presentation and let's let's dive into the topic right away. Uh, unfortunately, I'm the only person here today. No Olivia, no George, no guests, special guests from other companies. So I'm the only person today. So hope you will enjoy uh, this time with me, because I will definitely uh, will do this. All right. So uh, let's start with what we'll be talking about today. Let's talk about seven ways to book more meetings with multi-channel conditional sequences. Conditional sequences. Uh, my name is Vlad, and I am gross person here at Reply with SDRS background. Spent almost, I guess, almost 10 years now doing some outbound sales development, prospecting, um, booking lots of meetings, trying different strategies, tactics. Uh, not all of them actually um, just store them, lots of them save as, as a bookmark for, for better times, but yeah um done lots of things so far and super happy to share some findings on cold outreach today with you so here's what we will cover today first of all we will go through these seven ideas for multi-channel conditional sequences so maybe best practices i will show you some like micro demos of how to implement those strategies as always some really useful bonus content so stay tuned uh stay tuned um and i will share the link just in like in the last 10 minutes when we when we finish the presentation i will send the link to the slides with all useful con pieces of content uh, so, yeah, I will share everything, recording, tab, templates, resources, links, and slides. So, first um, first of all, uh, recently we launched these conditional sequences here at Reply. Feel free to learn more about them with some advanced, maybe, frameworks, templates, ready-to-use templates, and you can learn even more about this product. So, uh, so what is conditional? Con what is conditional sequences? Um, basically, it's a brand new functionality we added almost a week ago. So, haven't had a chance to play 
around with all funky features myself, but uh, it's quite powerful in my opinion. And just a few tools out there have those um, conditional sequences uh, in their products as a feature. And um, yeah, so conditional sequences help you create like branched if else logic sequences campaigns. So you don't have to push data from one sequence to another one, create some workflows automation. So you can now um, like create them in one in one sequence and make your life easier, I, I would say. And especially it makes sense when it comes to multi-channel sequences. Um, so think about it's like a Zapier maybe workflow. If you have L, if else logic, then do if if yes, then do this. If else, do this. So you have different pass, passes, uh, branches. We call it branches, and you can automate uh, your workflows based on those if else um, logic and branches. So why it's important nowadays? So why we decided to do this? What we've noticed so far that like cold outreach is like changing. That's for sure. That's what we can see internally when we send emails, when we do cold outreach outbound. And we've noticed that, right, Google just launched their update back in August with additional banners. They probably, they like almost killed uh, open tracking, not for everyone. But um, in most cases, when you rely on additional domains or multiple domains, and if you use them, there is a huge chance if you track your opens, your emails will land into the spam folder. And they add even more, more banners for users to make like their product safer. And recently, by the way, two, a week ago, they launched another update for to fight against phishing and links, like for dangerous uh, links. And now we have a bunch of different, different uh, like banners when we when we use Gmail. Same with Outlook, like, uh, do you want to share this link? Do you want to click this link? Do you want to open this email? It's a bunch of different updates. So again, open tracking is getting harder. So now we, we've noticed that more and more people like start using additional channels for their cold outreach, like uh, LinkedIn, WhatsApp is getting super important. Um, and maybe some other like cold calling. Uh, I, I've heard on LinkedIn was that, that some 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 teams st again start using cold calling as channel number two again. And when it comes to LinkedIn, when we check their user base, we can see that they almost doubled their user base in the last I would say six years. So as you can see here, back in 2018, they had almost. 500 million users and now in 2024 they have almost more than 1 billion users so they doubled their their user base in this like short period of time and it means that more decision makers more users live like are using linkedin constantly so we can we can expand our reach on LinkedIn as well, because when they introduced sales engagement concept back in 2014, maybe 2015, 16, something like that. So LinkedIn wasn't that important for, for cold outreach and it's getting uh, better now, right? And when, in, when we check different channels, we know that email, Cold email, cold emails with videos, LinkedIn touches like emails, connection requests, messages, and cold calling are one of the most uh, like the most scalable and the most important channels for for sales development, cold outreach, prospecting, business development, and so on. And so that's why we wanted to combine all those channels in one like unified workflow, so, so you can you can play around with. Uh, with your sequences and your campaigns um and again before before we jump before we jump to the topic uh it's super connected to what we what we discussed today here what we're discussing today here is like our multi-channel course so we teamed up with really cool experts out there to create this course already 2000 people joined and rolled the course 
Um, and uh, you will you will have everything in one place, starting from lead generation, B two B data, personalization, copywriting, all different channels, how to combine them, best practices in one place, including things like templates, sequences, ready to use sequences in one place. So feel free to check this link, and then you can uh, you can use it to implement your your multi channel cold outreach. And now even make it more advanced, relying on conditional sequences. So now let's let's get to the topic, and let me show you all those uh, seven workflows uh, we we've created for you, so you can play around with them. Number one, it's multi-channel conditional sequences. So um, recently, like here at Reply, we were a multi-channel call outreach tool for years now, and. We here at Reply as SDR team, as salespeople, we were we have been using multi-channel linear sequences for quite a long period of time. And as you can see here, when it comes to our inbound leads, we used all possible channels to maximize our uh, reply rates and open rates, including things like email, manual task, manual emails, LinkedIn touches, different types of touches, call calling and sometimes even WhatsApp and so on. As you can see here, we had like, um, we were able to book more meetings just because adding some additional channels like text, meaning SMS or manual emails with video. So all those, those, um, those um, touches help us book more meetings. But again, as salespeople, maybe as an SDRs, as SDRs, we don't have time to personalize emails for every prospect, right? So that's why a uh, concept of like conditional sequences is something that can help uh, like make your workflows better. And now pretty much the same sequence, it, it was linear. Now we just modified into a conditional sequence and just, just that's the first one we updated um, a few days ago. So number one, it's multi-channel conditional sequence. It will be perfect for, for inbound leads, tier one outbound leads, meaning you, it's like your best potential customers, uh, the biggest deals, the best opportunities and so on. So in this case, you, you want to modify all channels in one sequence. So here's how it works. Uh, I already prepared those templates for you. So here's how it works. It's just our inbound sequence. So we start with email, then task, like research task, then additional email day two. And then we have our first condition. It's like we check whether or not we have LinkedIn URL of this particular prospect. So if then we create this condition, so how, here's how it works. You just click plus, then choose condition. And then you have a bunch of options out there popular ones and less important ones. So let's let's say you want to check if this, this prospect has um, LinkedIn URL, then you choose this condition, LinkedIn URL is set, then you click save, and then we will check, we will create the condition whether or not this prospect has a LinkedIn URL, if yes, meaning we have data this, we can push this prospect to a more personalized LinkedIn step. If no, we will proceed with emails. Why? Why? Because we don't have LinkedIn data for, for um, LinkedIn touches, so we don't need to spend time here. And then it could be a manual LinkedIn touch or automatic one. So again, it's a template here, then we will proceed with pretty much the same emails here, but with some delays. And then we'll just proceed with those two branches based on LinkedIn URL, then we proceed and then we check. So we send this connection request over here as on day three. And now we check whether or not this prospect accepted our connection request on LinkedIn. And then we create a new condition, for example, if LinkedIn connection status is connected, then it means we can send messages uh, to those prospects. If not, we can send messages that right to to, to like to non-connected users on LinkedIn. So if yes, we will proceed with a message. If not, we will proceed. If no, we will proceed with just generic emails. And now we have three pretty much. Uh, identical 
branches, but with some with some adjustments based on prospect information. And then we can we can proceed with uh, additional branches like based on their phone number, their their like um, maybe some we can personalize those emails based on other conditions, but I will show you them uh, on on other use cases for other use cases. So that's that's our current inbound lead prospects campaign uh, based on different conditions. It's not finished yet. Uh, it's not a perfect one, but yeah, I want to improve it, but uh, that's that's how we will proceed with our inbound prospects. Um, any questions so far? Let me check the chat. Let me see. Uh, is this in the platform right now? Uh, good question. For some users, it's uh, for new prospects, for new create, recently created accounts, it's already activated from day one. For existing customers, you have to chat with our support team and ask them, please activate this feature uh, for, for, for us. Mm, but yeah, we will roll it out to everyone in two weeks. I, I think so. Currently, it's in beta, but you can you can ask us to activate it. Are there additional charges for these features? Nope. It's like already activated. It's already uh, added for all existing customers for free. Um, basically, it's uh, I would say to simplify it, it's a actually a brand new brand new experience for our existing uh, sequences so it's a pretty much the same sequence experience but with conditions now all right um number 2 you can personalize your campaigns and your sequence based on contact information for example uh, here's another use case for you uh, based on contact information i mean email LinkedIn URL and phone number. So for example, when you add your prospects to your campaigns, your sequences, you can create um, condition as step number one right away. So there is no need to send email and then create a condition. You can start with condition right away. So then you can check property, email is set. It means whether or not this prospect has an email or phone number, the same with phone number is set is set if uh, you have a phone number you can start call calling those prospects and we will create a script here script and play it and you can proceed with call calling if they have a phone number if no um you can proceed with uh with um with just your cold emails and then we will add a phone, like an email, a step, additional step here. Uh, so yeah, so the same with emails, phone number, and LinkedIn URL fields. So again, here's how it works. When you import new contacts to your sequence, to your sequence, people, add contact, um, mm -hmm, import from SC file, so make sure that you always import personal LinkedIn URL and phone number and map those fields from your CSV file or your HubSpot Salesforce integration zone to your reply fields. So that way we will basically use these fields for both for checking conditions and creating tasks for like LinkedIn touches and phone and cold calling touches. So make sure to import those fields accordingly, to map those fields accordingly. So number two, you can create conditions based on contact information. For example, if you don't have phone number, uh, sorry, email, email is uh, not set, save, you can send um, you can send emails, right? So you can proceed with phone steps, maybe LinkedIn touches, maybe some kind of tasks, and maybe WhatsApp touches, for example. So that's based on contact information. 
Um, all right, number three. So again, make sure to import your uh, contact information properly and map those fields accordingly. Number three, based on prospects engagement. This one is interesting. So uh, prospect engagement, again, for example, we will start our campaign with cold email step. And then if, for example, if you still track opens or links or link clicks, and you still have great open rates, I don't know, maybe based on your use case, uh, it's it still works for you, then you can use those um, engagement metrics for, because for some of our sequences, inbound sequences and our main domain reply to the O, we still can send cold emails with uh, with uh, with open tracking enabled. So if you track your opens and clicks, um, so but be, again, be careful because it's a pro zone here. Here I would say uh, you can use engagement metrics. For example, you send email number one, and then you can you can create a condition based on engagement metrics. For example, opens, clicks, and views. Opens, it's a number of whether or not they open an email. So it's yes or no. More than zero means they open an email. Based on clicks, it's whether or not they clicked um, a link. And views, it means how many times they opened your email. So because they can open email and they can view your emails multiple times, maybe 10 times. And then you can create this condition based on engagement. For example, if um, views are more than more than 10 times or five times or three times, let's say three times, we can push prospects to different uh different branches for example if they opened our emails viewed our emails more than three times then push maybe to a more personalized sequence if not just proceed with a regular email only uh campaign and then you can just create as you can see here i created even more even more conditions for example for example i can say hey did they I can even create in that way views more than one times. And then I can like say, okay, let's proceed with just generic email. Generic email because they haven't seen my first email. And then I can create another condition under this condition. Say, hey, how many times they viewed my emails? If they viewed it more than 10 times, I will definitely create a manual personalized uh, email, maybe this video, maybe personalized image, maybe something like uh, well research and so on. If less, then again, maybe a little bit more personalized email with some additional um, personalization points like industry, company size, and so on. But if they viewed my emails more than 10 times, that's, that's where I want to spend uh, more time. Uh, let's see. Any questions? Um, can we have the recording as a call? Yes, of course, as always. Is multi-channel campaign reporting available via API? Well, oh, great question. <laughs> I, I Unfortunately, I don't know. Um, yeah, apologize about that. Mm, it's I guess yes, because why? Um, but I might be mistaken because in the reporting, it's it's already available in uh, uh, over here in stats. You will have just uh, more, uh, oh, it's, I haven't launched it. You will have branched step 1.1, step 1.2, step 1.1.2.3. So yeah, you will have those stats in the UI. I'm not sure about the API. I apologize about that. Um, does reply is good for cold email with existing and evolving limitation? Yes, um, it's still awesome and still works for lots of users out there. Do you should we turn all 
turn off reporting off now with the new Google rules. Uh, we had, Peter, we had a great webinar on this topic because it's quite complicated question based on your use case, your volume, cold outreach volume, your domain. So uh, rule of thumb says yes. Uh, but for more pro users who, who knows Every, who know everything about deliverability, best practices, monitor everything on a daily basis, they still can turn on open tracking and like monitor those things precisely on their own. But for an average user, it's better to turn it off. I was told previously that you can connect multiple pipe LinkedIn accounts under one user to run. Uh, now you can do that. So um, a use case here, if you if you like the one user who manages multiple LinkedIn accounts, what you can do here, you can just create additional uh, like browsers, just create a new profile, and then log into this LinkedIn account, and then connect it to your to your reply account using Findy, and that's how it works. It's quite um, quite um yeah simple process hope uh, I, it helps ben jennifer are these conditions per email or for the whole campaign it's for the whole campaign i will show you more we will show you more use cases now uh great question um okay uh again based on contact information based on engagement like opens clicks and views. And now LinkedIn automation. We have a bunch of users who use reply purely for LinkedIn automation. So, and so here's how it works. Um, now you can use it just for LinkedIn automation only sequences. Here's how it works. Step number one, create a condition, whether or not LinkedIn URL is set. If yes, proceed with LinkedIn touches. If no, you can what you can do here, you can create an action. Action. Uh, the only action currently is move to a new sequence. Then choose your sequence. And if there is no LinkedIn URL, probably want to push to your linear email only sequence. But if they have a LinkedIn URL, we will proceed to our LinkedIn touches. Number one, view profile just for visibility, maybe then like a recent post and then we will send a connection request hey like excited to connect about reply or maybe a blank one and then again condition we will we will monitor this connection request status for three days here and um, again we will monitor it and if yes if they accepted your linkedin connection request you can proceed sending them messages if now you probably want to send them email if you use Sales Navigator, right? Uh, because you can send you can't send um, LinkedIn messages. But again, if they accepted your connection, you can proceed with your messages. Hey, thanks for accepting the connection, the invitation, and then your pitch here. And then you can send email follow up, uh, like message message. Here. Uh, so as you can see here, you can now use reply just for LinkedIn campaigns only. And so there is no need to move contacts between different campaigns just based on triggers. So now you can just use sequences, conditional sequences for this use case. Uh, hope this framework will work for majority of, uh, of you here again my best practice here is to check okay if they have linkedin proceed with linkedin touches if no then move to another sequence or maybe just proceed with your regular email steps even here let's see questions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to get tasks via API with this update? Oh, sorry, I'm not an API guy <laughs> here. Uh, you you should check with our support team because um, yeah, apologize about that. Uh, or or real webhooks. Uh, 
good questions. Um, I have no answers yet. Marcus, can you link them back to the same flow after you have separated them? Not yet. Um, got what you're talking here, you're asking for, but not yet, but it's um, in the process. So what you should do now, for example, if you want, for example, uh, if they accepted your connection request here, I guess what you mean, if they accepted connection request here, then maybe push back to this step. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's under development, but great question. Um, and of course, if you want to proceed with multi-channel uh, automations like LinkedIn add-on, so we have prepared a phone code for you, 50% off for one month. If you want to give it a try, feel free to like add LinkedIn add-on on the checkout page and use this phone code uh, and give it a try. So LinkedIn, one month, 50% off. Um, I will share the slides um, soon. And bonus content here, I'm a huge fan of collecting different templates, LinkedIn connection request as well. So I have prepared a really cool uh, like list of awesome LinkedIn connection requests. So that's how you can just get started with, uh, with this LinkedIn automation. So hope um, it will help you. Now let's proceed, move to another sequence. Uh, all right, so as we discussed, we have now like two additional entities here, condition and action. So for example, um, I will start with a generic email only sequence here, just step one, then step two, then step three, then step four, just my call dot reach campaign. And then in the end of this um, sequence, I will create a condition whether or not they viewed my emails. If yes, I will push them to additional personalized sequence. If no, mean it means they have never opened my emails. So maybe it's because of wrong timing. Maybe it's because of their spam filters. Maybe it's another reason um, why they haven't seen my emails. Like in 35 days, I will probably push them to additional sequence. So now we can just create a condition and create an action based on, again, uh, maybe engagement, maybe uh, something else. But yeah, what you can do here, just create branch and create different sequences for different engagement metrics, maybe something else, maybe even conditional fields, what, because you can use condition, condition, sorry, uh, custom fields. For example, we here at Reply have a field called um, team size, sales team size. Um, and uh, if we have this data, means they have sales team is set, I will push them to maybe additional um, multi-channel sequence. If no, it means they have no sales reps, SDRs. So probably I will push them to another, maybe like a generic uh, called email only campaign in a few weeks. So that's how you can, you can like use actions as well. Move prospects to another sequence, to different sequences. Number six is uh, complex conditions. So here's how it works. You can actually combine different mix, different variables, different properties in one condition. For example, I want to grab um, in contacts with company size between one to 50 employees. I click save and if this condition is true, I will push them, let's say, to SMB branch of this sequence. It's SMB branch here. Otherwise, it means they have bigger, they, ha they have more headcount. I will push to mid-market branch. And then again, I can proceed with uh, LinkedIn touches 
here because probably that's that's where I want to spend my connection request. Again, they are limited to 20 connection requests per day for a basic LinkedIn account typically. So yeah, I can send just uh, connect. And then I will proceed with, with SMB email only sequence over here. So again, based on different use cases, persona, company size, industry, vertical, you can you can play around with those complex uh, conditions. Here are a few examples. Again, finished, never opened, based on company size or industry, accepted, not accepted connection request. Interesting one is email provider. Here's how it works. Basically, when you import contacts to reply, we automatically define, identify prospects MX domain record. Mean It means we know prospects um, like email provider typically. As you can see here, Gmail, Office. So again, when you import prospect, we identify it for you. So what you can do here, you can just create a branch based on prospects email provider. Provider here is G Suite or provider is Office. So it means those emails are valid and they typically have very basic like uh, cybersecurity measurements. So you can you can push them to your email sequences. Otherwise, uh, typically it's um, a more advanced providers like M Mimecast, Proofpoint, uh, and so on. Typically, typically when you send emails to those providers, your open rate is super low. Why? Because they have better like um, protection in terms of deliverability and spam. And typically when you send emails to those providers, you kind of hurt your deliverability. So again, you can just, if you have those, um, I would say bad uh, providers, it's a wrong word, but again, if you have those email providers in your sequence, you can just move them or remove from your existing sequence. So that's how you can protect your domain and your email inboxes for a longer period of time. So it's another use case here. Uh, based on custom fields, as I said, for example, company size, department size, their traffic, or like maybe you can even sync your custom fields from HubSpot or Salesforce uh, to reply. And then you can, again, you can uh, create conditions based on these custom variables um, as well from your HubSpot, Salesforce, and so on. Mm -hmm. For example, another use case here, maybe you have a huge or, or bigger SDR team and you don't want to mess up with someone else prospects. So you can create um, condition owner, HubSpot contact owner is your name, then proceed with the sequence. Otherwise, just do nothing, basically. Uh, prospect stage and conditions. So yeah, you can combine even different, uh, little different properties. For example, provider is G Suite and uh, phone number is set. So again, uh, up to you. Let me see, do you have any questions so far? Uh, can you add two different criteria to the action? So yeah, mm, you can do this. Yes, we discussed, recently discussed. Uh, okay, and then strategy number seven. Again, recently we also launched an integration with our B2B. Uh, it's um, a personal level identity website tracking tool. So what you can do here, you can just go to integrations, then connect your RB2B account, configure, then identify and choose your sequence for RB2B contacts, let's say RB2B integration, then 
a finished mapping. Typically, it's already done for you. And then you can push those prospects to your B2B, your B2B sequence. And then what I've noticed with these tools that typically they don't have emails for all prospects. So for example, when someone visits our website, they have, sometimes they have just LinkedIn URL, but they don't have um, emails. So your step number one uh, condition will be email is set, then yes, no. If yes, proceed with our B2B emails. No, you can just proceed with uh, LinkedIn steps. So that's um, that's how you can combine a reply with new conditional sequences and our B2B integration. Currently, we are also evaluating this tool and we already booked a few additional meetings with it. So, um, so you can give it a try and play around with native integration plus conditional sequences too. All right, so so let me share share the link in the chat. Boom. Okay, so as promised, here's a link uh, to the presentation. Plus, I col connect collected all pieces of content in this link. So feel free to. To, to jump to slide number 21, click all resources in one link. So you can you can get everything you need and everything I shared in this um, webinar with you today. And as always, Q&A, let's see if you have any additional questions so far. All right, I guess no. So as always, let's tie, let's stay in touch. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or send an email. Feel free to check out our multi-channel cold outreach course because we like tried our best to share like insightful content, ready to use guides, step-by-step -step workflows, how to create these sequences with templates. So it should help you with, with your um, new sequence as well. And as always, thanks for your time and see you around. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. See you soon.